in this video, we're going to look at the details in the steps for transcription in prokaryotes. So when it comes to transcription in prokaryotes, understand that we're going to have a initiation phase, an elongation phase, and a termination phase. When it comes to chain initiation, step one is where the promoter is going to be recognized by the sigma factor, which is part of the hollow enzyme for RNA polymerase. Remember that this recognition by the sigma factor is going to be at the negative 35 region in the promoter. Again, we're going to have binding of the polymerase holoenzyme to DNA. And remember that we define it holoenzyme because of the different subunits that are going to be in it. And all of it is going to be migrating to the promoter. On step two, we're going to have the actual formation of an RNA polymerase closed promoter complex. And on step three, in the initiation phase, we're going to have unwinding, meaning the separation of the strands. And remember that this unwinding is going to happen in the negative 10 region of the promoter. We're also going to be forming an open promoter complex. In the chain elongation steps, as you can see, we're going to have the RNA polymerase initiate mRNA synthesis. And it almost always starts with a purine. So understand that the reason why it has been observed that is um, when RNA polymerase starts synthesizing this RNA molecule, um, the reason why it is a purine-rich sequence is because it is known to stabilize the elongation complex. So, as you can see, more NTPs are going to be incorporated, okay? NTPs is for, or it stands for nucleotides, triphosphate. On step five, as you can see, the RNA polymerase holoenzyme catalyzes the elongation of mRNA for about four more nucleotides. I want to specify something about this step. Remember, when the RNA molecule is making this RNA, is using the three prime to five prime DNA strand as a template. I'm going to highlight the region in magenta for clarification. So this portion of the double-stranded DNA is what's been utilized as a template. The RNA strand that is synthesized is complementary to the template strand. What it means is that in this complementation, if we look at the base bearing, okay, and I say that the top line is going to be, or I'm just going to do it in columns. If these are the, um, the specific nitrogenous bases, because remember that base bearing happens at the nitrogenous bases. So if in the template,
we have adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. This is how the base pairing will go when we have the RNA. So let me just do it as, as a slash. So if in the template we have adenine, its complement in the RNA is going to be uracil. If in the template we have guanine, in the RNA we're going to have cytosine. If we have in the template cytosine, the complement in the RNA is going to be guanine. And if we have thymine in the template, because remember DNA is in the template, it's going to base pair in the RNA with adenine. And that's the base pairing when we synthesize that new mRNA. I just wanted to make that clear. On step six, during the elongation stage, we're going to be releasing the sigma subunit as um, the core RNA polymerase proceeds down the template. It is going to continue to elongate the RNA transcript in the manner that I just explained of how it is going to be creating a complementary strand to the template strand and the base pairing is as I just explained in my little column. So when it comes to the chemistry of this uh, transcription, understand that this is very similar to what we've seen before. When we have the growing strand, remember, I'm just going to spend some time labeling this. So this area that I circle in green is going to be the template strand of DNA. Then remember that as we have the growing strand of RNA, we're going to have RNA that is base bearing, okay, with the DNA template, as I was just mentioning in the previous slide. Then understand that similar to what we've seen before, when this chemistry of transcription is happening, synthesis, let me just write it on the other side, synthesis of RNA molecule is in the five prime to three prime direction. So what does that mean? Similar to what we've seen previously, this area, okay, of the RNA is going to be acting as a nucleophile. This area is going to be our electrophile. This area is going to be our leaving group. Because remember that when this um, reaction happens, we're going to have inorganic phosphate okay, being generated. And overall, after my nucleophile at the three prime end of the a nucleotide residue that is ready to do the nucleophilic attack on the incoming nucleotide, we are going to be forming a three prime to five prime 
phosphodiester bond. This is chemistry that we have seen previously. And as you can see here, similar to what we have seen in the case of uh, DNA um, replication, magnesium is an important divalent cation. And as you can see in the image, it is going to be stabilizing okay, the negative charge of the backbone. Stabilizes negative charge of backbone. Remember, at phosphate. Then we go through the term termination stage of transcription. Now, I'm going to be discussing specifically two different types of uh, chain terminations, okay? The first one is intrinsic termination, and then the next one is going to be the rho factor. So, when it comes to chain termination, understand that there are some RNAs that have a sequence that now can um, actually have an intramolecular attraction, okay? And what, uh, what we're going to be seeing is that these GC-rich areas are going to be um, forming a hairpin, And what happens overall is that once that hairpin is formed because of that intramolecular base pairing that happens in the RNA that was just formed, that is going to stop the transcription of the system. Another way in which transcription can be terminated is through a row factor. And understand that uh, here in the slide, we have different steps in rho factor, okay? So understand that when it comes to the rho factor termination, in this mechanism, we have the rho factor attaching to the, MR, to the RNA molecule that is growing, okay? And is going to be moving along the RNA molecule that has been synthesized, but it is going to be behind the RNA polymerase, which is this molecule. So, when the RNA polymerase pauses at a termination site, okay, then what happens is that the rho factor is going to unwind the DNA-RNA hybrid. So basically, it's kind of like it taps on the shoulder, the RNA polymerase, and it releases the RNA molecule and the RNA polymerase that just synthesized the RNA molecule. 